Welcome back to Hypercar Updates, the series where we talk all things Hypercar related to that particular month. For this video, we will go over the news, rumors, and just general topics from the month of March in 2023. Episode 3 of Hypercar Updates will include subjects such as the Super Sebring Weekend from 2023, the Isota Freschini car reveal, and the severe penalty handed to MSR after the tire data manipulation at the Rolex 24. Those topics and so much more will be discussed on this month's episode of Hypercar Updates. The first topic I'd like to discuss is the racing itself. Another weekend has gone by with racing and this one was Super Sebring. The first time we got to see a World Endurance Championship race in 2023 and the second round of IMSA, which was the 12 hours of Sebring and my oh my, what a race that was. In WEC Hypercar, it was the number seven Toyota that took the win at the 1000 miles of Sebring with the eight car just behind to make it a one two for the Japanese manufacturer. Ferrari ended up P3, their first ever podium in Hypercar, and a pretty solid day for them as well, showing that they could be the second fastest team in Hypercar. The number 50 car of Antonio Fiocco actually took pole position in the previous qualifying session. And don't forget about Porsche and Cadillac. They were there in the fight as well and could definitely be a challenge to the other manufacturers. I can confidently say that Toyota is the team to beat throughout the remainder of the season. They looked the most well-structured and dominant at Sebring, so the manufacturers will have to put a lot of pressure on them as we head into the second round in Portugal. Over in IMSA, it was a pretty competitive battle in GTP. All four manufacturers showed some pretty good pace throughout the event, but it was the number 31 Action Express Cadillac that took the victory. Although, it could have been a different story if the massive incident at turn 3 just 20 minutes prior to the race finish didn't happen. If you don't know the story, well with just 20 minutes ago, the race leaders, the number 6 Porsche and the number 10 Acura made contact resulting in both cars out of the race. Also involved was the number 7 Porsche of Felipe Nazar, so this resulted in the top 3 in GTP all out. If you want to know exactly what happened in the Sebring races of the WEC and IMSA, I made race reviews on both events. I put the links to the videos in the description down below. Continuing the topic of Sebring, and a manufacturer that didn't have a good time was Peugeot. The 9x8 hypercars both encountered gearbox issues throughout the race, and this resulted in the Peugeot hypercars losing ground to the other four manufacturers. And actually, at the end of the race, both 9x8 hypercars finished behind the Van Wall entry. And remember, Van Wall just made their debut in the hypercar class. So the question remains, what was going on at Sebring for Peugeot, and will they be able to recover in the next race? Well, sometime after the race, it was confirmed there was an issue with the actuator, which could have been the cause for the gearbox issues for both 9x8 hypercars. An update was planned to fix the cars, but it wasn't available for Sebring, hence they had the issues. I think something else that affected the 9x8 hypercar was the bumpy surface of the Sebring Raceway. We know the track surface is very bumpy, especially in the final corner at the Sunset Bend, so that's another factor to take into consideration that affected the Peugeot hypercars. We know from the past that the 9x8 hypercar has had reliability issues. Take the 8 hours of Bahrain last season where both cars had gearbox issues. Personally, I don't believe there's any correlation between the issues last year versus now, as it seems this issue could just be a one-off thing considering that an update is coming for the next race and the bumpy service of Sebring could have had an impact on the car as well. Meanwhile, in customer entry news, Jota Sport has revealed their race-ready livery for their 963 Porsche that will debut at the 6 hours of Spa later this year. The livery showcases a completely different color scheme to the factory Porsche Penske cars, showing that this is a completely different team, as Jota pick gold to be the primary color on their hypercar. Since this 963 entry won't debut till the 6 hours of Spa, Hertz Team Jota entered in an LMP2 entry for the first two rounds of the WEC. And actually, speaking of that LMP2, the 48 car won the LMP2 class victory at Sebring, so a good start already for Hertz Team Jota. Jota Sport is not the only LMDH joining at Spa. 
as another entry in the form of the number three Cadillac has joined the Spa hypercar grid. And this is also the same driver lineup and car as the IMSA variant of the Ganassi LMDH. will join the hypercar grid at Spa in addition to their Le Mans entry. We already know that Renger van de Zenda and Sebastian Bourdais will be two of the drivers for the number three Cadillac. And as mentioned previously, it will not just race at the six hours of Spa, but in the 24 hours of Le Mans. So this means two Cadillacs at Spa, both fielded by Chip Ganassi Racing, and three at Le Mans. Okay, I wanna talk about Porsche Penske now. At the very beginning of the month of March, we got the entry list for this year's edition of the 24 hours of Le Mans. And don't worry, if you haven't seen the Le Mans entry list, I made a video which I'll link in the top right corner and in the description. Anyway, in Hypercar, there was an extra Porsche Penske included. This actually means that there will be four Porsches on the grid, in addition to the Jota Porsche, which we just mentioned. There's some really cool things about this car. First off, the driver lineup consists of IMSA GTP drivers. Nick Tandy, Felipe Nazar, and Matthew Giamine are all Porsche factory drivers from the GTP class. The number 75 is picked because it is Porsche's 75th anniversary as a manufacturer. And to celebrate the 100 year anniversary of the 24 hours of Le Mans, Porsche will have a special retro livery on this car. So that of course will be special to look at. There's big news on Isoda Fraschini. As earlier this month, the Italian-based company unveiled their Le Mans hypercar. And what a striking livery and hypercar this is. Isotto Fraschini's car is called the Tipo 6 LMH Competizioni, and they are expecting to make their debut in 2023. The car still needs to be homologated before it can start participating, but we're hoping that Isotto Fraschini's LMH entry can make its debut at the six hours of Monza. If this is the case, and Isoda Fraschini joins as a race-by-race -race entry, they will be the eighth manufacturer on the grid in 2023. That, of course, would be amazing to see, and I'm hoping that the Vector Sport ran Isoda Fraschini LMH will make its debut very soon. If you want to find out more on their Le Mans hypercar, check out the video that I'll link in the top right corner. Speaking of newcomers in hypercar, Van Wall finally was able to participate in the World Endurance Championship, and they will do so throughout the entire season in hypercar. In episode two of hypercar updates, we talked about Van Wall not even being able to race because of the legal issues surrounding Baikalis using the Van Wall name in the World Endurance Championship. But it seems those issues may be over as the Baikalis LMH has been branded as the Van Wall LMH in Sebring and will continue to do so throughout the remainder of the season. So how did their first race go? Well, actually it was pretty successful. Van Wall only encountered a major issue in the form of a suspension failure, but they were able to get that car back out on track. They finished eighth and ahead of both Peugeot entries. And at the very beginning of the race, when the Glickenhaus was there, the Van Wall was able to get past that entry and keep ahead successfully. Although Glickenhaus was struggling with some reliability issues during that race. So maybe that's why Van Wall was able to consistently pull ahead of the Glickenhaus. But considering that this Van Wall Van der Waal 680 is a brand new hypercar into this championship, if you ask me, it's quite remarkable how well it worked out. They finished with a few points ahead of the Peugeot entries and recovered well after that suspension error. Honestly, I'm just hoping they have a good season. It's just great to see that this entry finally made it into the hypercar class. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it seems there won't be any factory Ferrari 499Ps in the IMSA GTP class, at least for the next few years. Here's the thing though, we basically knew that would happen. The only difference is that now it's confirmed by Ferrari themselves. But don't get me wrong, this doesn't mean that the 499P won't be going to IMSA. On the contrary, I expect to see a Ferrari in 2024 in the GTP class. And I think it will take the form of a customer entry from Risi Competizioni. Risi Competizioni has been interested in buying a Ferrari 499P to race in IMSA. I honestly do see it happening as early as 2024, 
but don't take anything from this as this is just a rumor. I guess we'll wait for official confirmation to see if a customer Ferrari is on the GTP grid in 2024. Since we already mentioned GTP, that ties in perfectly to our next topic, and that is the claim of the Meyer Shank Racing manipulation during the 24 hours of Daytona just a few months ago. Earlier this month, it was announced that the MSR team had manipulated the tire data during the 24 hours of Daytona. This was to show the tire pressures were within the boundary set by IMSA's tire organization Michelin, when actually the tire pressures were lower. The consequences were very severe, including penalties such as a $50,000 fine and a points deduction of 200 team and driver points from the IMSA championship. This resulted in MSR unfortunately being last in the championship. However, they would keep the Rolex 24 win in 2023. The last thing I'd like to discuss is on Alpine. We haven't heard a lot from Alpine's LMDH program in the past, but it seems like now they are starting to prepare for it. So great news from the Alpine team. Alpine previously raced in the hypercar class in 2021 and 2022 with a modified Rebellion R13 called the Alpine A480. For 2023, they're stepping down to LMP2, but they're preparing for hypercar simultaneously. The four drivers on this screen seem to be some of the drivers Alpine is considering to potentially pilot their LMDH prototypes. All these racers currently race for Alpine in LMP2, and some of them raced in hypercar with the A480. And according to an article put out by Sportscar365, they were in contact with the team principal of Signatech, who stated that Alpine and Signatech are focusing their attention on next year's hypercar assault. And those four drivers are already a part of the driver lineup discussions. We know that Alpine is using an Areca chassis for their LMDH, but we don't know the majority of the internals of the car, such as the engine and, of course, the driver lineup. But according to that quote from the team principal of Signatech, it seems like they already have a plan. I would expect to see more news on Alpine's LMDH later on this year, and hopefully a reveal and a test session from Alpine. So that completes episode 3 of Hypercar Updates. Which topic interests you the most? Let me know all your thoughts down in the comments section. If you're interested in endurance racing and you want to get updates on the WEC and IMSA, make sure to subscribe to the left. And if you want to see more videos, watch one of the suggested options to the right of your screen. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.